Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we're going to have an in-depth discussion about the hotspot. Stick around and we'll get right to it. A big shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. One of the more confusing things to newcomers uh, that want to take their Raspberry Pi and operate in the field is exactly how the hotspot works. So today we're going to take a few minutes and go through that and kind of uh, explain it from A to Z as to how that works. Now, why would you want to use the hotspot? Well, if you're in your shack all the time and you never really plan to take your Raspberry Pi and go out portable, yeah, it's probably not something that you really want to even mess with. However, if you want to take a Raspberry Pi like this and connect nothing but the power cable and then maybe a sound card and a GPS and be able to control it from another wireless device like a tablet or your phone, then the hotspot is the way you accomplish that. All right, so let's jump over to the whiteboard where I can start going through all of this information. So let's give you an idea of how the hotspot works. Now, you'll hear me throughout this presentation talk about something called the SSID. That is the Service Set Identifier. It basically is the name that your router will broadcast out. Uh, so if you open up your uh, wireless device, such as your phone or your tablet, and you go into your Wi-Fi settings, uh, that is the name that would show up there. So just so we're clear on that in the very beginning. Now, normally, you're, uh, if you're in your shack, what you would have is your router. And your router would be connected to the internet. And your router would be constantly broadcasting out a wireless signal that contained the SSID. Then any other devices you have, your phone, your tablet, your laptop, or in this case, the Raspberry Pi. You would use the GUI interface through the Raspberry Pi to create a Wi-Fi connection to your router which would also connect you to the internet. Now that's the way it would work normally. Okay, so now let's assume that you're going to go out into the field. In the field, we've got our Raspberry Pi here, but we don't have the router over here. So the Raspberry Pi is going to run a check kind of in the background and it's going to look for any of those known SSIDs. When it can't see this SSID, the Pi is going to become the router and it will start broadcasting out a wireless signal that will contain a new SSID. This SSID we can set to be whatever we want it to be using hotspot tools. Once the Pi is in hotspot mode, then we can take any other wireless device, maybe that's your phone, or maybe that's a tablet, or maybe that's even a laptop. But we can take any other wireless device and use the Wi-Fi in those devices to connect to the Raspberry Pi. Once we've established this connection between our wireless device and the Raspberry Pi, we can use an application called VNC to control the Raspberry Pi. And I'll go through showing you guys how this actually looks on the computer here in a few minutes. But I just want you to get a good idea of the way uh, this works. Now, let's get rid of this for a second. And let's assume that we have our Pi, and it's in hotspot mode, so it's still broadcasting out that uh, wireless SSID. But now we arrive back at the home or shack. So we've got our router here that is also broadcasting out an SSID. 
Once the Pi runs the check, it's going to see this known SSID again. It will shut down the hotspot and create another Wi-Fi connection back to your router at your home or shack. And again, this is connected to the internet. Can't spell. This is connected to the internet, so you've got a connection all the way from your Pi through the router back out to the internet. So I hope that kind of gives you a, a general idea of the way this works uh, for which, which device is broadcasting the signal and what you connect to when. Now, if you're at home and you wanted to run your Pi headless, you could take another device, and this is the way I run mine here in the shack. So I've got my Mac sitting here. Uh, my Mac is connected to my router and the Pi is connected to the router. So I would open VNC on my Mac and I would give uh, VNC the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and that IP address will vary depending on what your router has assigned as an IP address to the Raspberry Pi. So we've got a couple of things we need to take care of before we start trying to play with the hotspot. First of all, you want to uh, run build a pie is probably the easiest way, but we do need to install the hotspot and hotspot tools. In addition to that, let's go ahead and come up to our main pie menu. Let's come down to preferences and let's come down to Raspberry Pi configuration. Inside of this dialog box, we want to click on the Interfaces tab, and we want to ensure that VNC has been enabled. It is disabled by default when you first install the Raspbian operating system, so you will need to enable this before you're able to use VNC. Should you run into any problems with this dialog box, uh, maybe this is grayed out or something like that, I do want to show you one other way to be able to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and open the terminal window, and I'm going to run sudo raspy-config. That's going to open up this dialog box here. This time we'll come down to option five, which is our interface options. Now guys, on this box, you can't use your mouse. Uh, it doesn't, uh, it won't do anything but highlight the text. It actually won't select anything for you. So you're gonna have to use your up, down arrows, your tab key, and your return key. But once I've got option five highlighted in red, I'm going to go ahead and press enter. I'll come down to VNC and press enter again. And then it's going to ask me if I would like to enable uh, the VNC server. Uh, you can use tab here to select yes or no, and then press enter once you've made your selection. It'll return this window here telling you that the VNC server has been enabled. We'll go ahead and press enter again to choose OK, and we're done. So I'll use the tab key to get down to the finish button and press enter. There is no need to reboot after you've enabled the VNC server. When you first start working with the hotspot, the easiest way to manage that is with an application called Hotspot Tools. So I'm gonna go ahead and open Hotspot Tools. You'll find that in your ham radio subcategory of your main menu. And let's go ahead and open that up here on the test box that I've got running. Now, this gives you a ton of information right up here in the very beginning, uh, in these boxes that are grayed out. The status tells you that the hotspot is enabled. That means that it's capable of starting. That does not uh, indicate that it is actually running at the moment. The state is the one that tells you whether it is actually running at the moment or not. So as you can see, the uh, state in this case is inactive. And you can also look up here and see that I am connected to an SSID in my shack. Uh, and the SSID is KM4ACK-857. The next box down tells you the SSID of the hotspot. So that's the name that you're going to be looking for when the Pi is in hotspot mode and you're on your wireless device, such as your phone or tablet, and trying to connect to the Pi, this is the name that will show up. 
The next box down gives you the password that you've set for the SSID. So once you're on your phone or tablet and you see this RPI hotspot name, you're going to click on it and it's going to ask you for a password. This is the password. Whatever is in this space here is the password that you will use. Now, if you want to change the SSID name or the password, you can always come right here to the first option under Hotspot Tools. Click on this and that will allow you to change either one of those. The next item down is the IP address. And this is going to be important once you start trying to connect VNC to your Raspberry Pi. So after you've connected to your Raspberry Pi through your wireless settings on your, uh, on your phone or tablet, then you're going to open up the VNC client and you're going to create a new connection. It's going to ask you which IP address you want to connect to. You will use this IP here. And unless you've done some uh, kind of trick stuff in the back to change this up, you will be using 10.10.10.10. The last line here is what's called force mode, and you can see that that is inactive. Force mode is just a way that we can force the hotspot to run, even though it may be able to see a current SSID that it knows about. So this is handy. Uh, maybe if you just want to do a demo of something, uh, you got a buddy over in your shack, or maybe you just need to test something. Uh, this gives us an easy way to put the Raspberry Pi in the hotspot mode. Now, let's talk for a minute about the indicator up by the clock. Uh, this is what I call the Wi-Fi fan, and this indicates that it's in a normal mode, and I can verify that by left-clicking on it and seeing a list of available SSIDs that I could connect to. This is the way you would normally interact with the Raspberry Pi when you're uh, in your shack. Now, I'm going to go ahead and force the Raspberry Pi into hotspot mode. So I'm going to click Force Hotspot. We'll give it a couple of seconds uh, for that to take effect. Now you notice up by the clock, we no longer have the Wi-Fi fan. Now we have these two opposing arrows. You may also see two opposing arrows with an X over them. Uh, the X would indicate that you do not have an internet connection to the Pi. Uh, since I'm connected uh, via a Cat5 cable right now, I have an internet connection even though I have forced the Raspberry Pi into hotspot mode. If we left click on those two opposing arrows, you will see that it says no wireless LAN interfaces found. And that's because the hotspot has basically taken over your wireless card inside your Raspberry Pi. So the GUI interface uh, actually no longer sees that wireless device uh, is available. Now looking back at hotspot tools, you will see that the state has changed to active, indicating that the hotspot is currently active. So if I go over to my phone or tablet or another wireless device, I would be able to see in the Wi-Fi settings, I would be able to see this RPI hotspot, click on it to connect, and then enter the password, and that would get me connected to the Raspberry Pi. After I'm connected, I could use a VNC client, and create a new connection to be able to control the Raspberry Pi. Now that I'm done with the demo here, I'll click Undo Force Hotspot. Oh, real quick before I do, notice that Force Mode is active right now, okay? So a lot of other things in this list become unavailable to use when you're in Force Mode. But now that we're done with the demo, I'll just go ahead and click Undo the Force Hotspot and it will go ahead and start restoring this to a regular mode. Uh, it takes us about 30 seconds to go through its complete check, but the Raspberry Pi will go ahead and connect back to the known SSID in my shack, and it will continue to monitor every five minutes to see if it can see that SSID or not. Now let's talk for a minute about how to connect to the Raspberry Pi once you're in the field and the hotspot has been activated. 
the first thing you're going to do is come up to your wireless settings. Now this could be on your phone or on a tablet, another laptop, uh, whatever device you're happening to be using at the moment. Just go ahead and open up the Wi-Fi settings. And we're going to look for that hotspot name, the SSID that we saw in hotspot tools earlier. So if you'll remember, that was RPI hotspot. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and it's going to ask me for that password uh, that you also saw in hotspot tools. So in this case, it's KM4ACK1234. Uh, I'll go ahead and click show the password, make sure that I've got it entered in there correctly, and I'll go ahead and click join. Now, if we double check our Wi-Fi on it, you'll see that I've got a check mark indicating that I am connected to the Raspberry Pi. However, I still can't see the Raspberry Pi screen. We've got one more step to make that happen. You're going to need an application on your device that you're using to be able to connect to the Raspberry Pi. So you'll need to download an application like RealVNC in advance. And I'll leave a link to this uh, website here so that you guys can download it down in the description below. Once you've got that downloaded and running on the wireless device and we're connected to the Raspberry Pi's hotspot, we need to go ahead and enter the Pi's IP address. And that is the 10.10.10.10 address that we were talking about earlier. So I'll go ahead and enter that. And I'm getting a warning that the identity has changed. You may or may not see this same warning, but it's perfectly okay and normal. So I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. Now it's going to ask me for my username and my password. This is your Raspberry Pi credentials. So in this case, my username is Pi. And if I remember right, this is still the default password of Raspberry on this test box. So I'll go ahead and click uh, or type in Raspberry there. If you like, you can check remember the password and then go ahead and click OK. Once I click OK, I'll be presented with the Pi's desktop. Now I have full control of the Raspberry Pi. Also, if you notice right over here under Conky, over on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see that the DHCP addresses for the hotspot, my Mac Mini has been connected and I've been assigned this IP address. That's just another function of the hotspot is it will, uh, it will assign each device that connects to it a unique ID. Okay, guys, there you have it. I hope this clears up any confusion that you may have had over the hotspot, and now you'll know why you would want to use it and how to use it in the field. We'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.